Now, are you interested in the same custom parts that I built for Cruise Missile? Don't forget to check out supercruises.com if you would like your own versions of the same parts I used on my car. Welcome to Dave's World, everybody. I do not usually film videos pretty much late at night in my garage, but I'm out here because I had recently posted a video on, after I did a tune on the car, I basically discovered a problem. I had footage on what I fixed, but it wasn't really detailed, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the footage, but since I posted that video, I talked to about 40 people that all had problems with their crews, and they sort of wanted to see what I did to get the car to boost properly and produce more power. Now. My garage is typically always a mess because as you can see, I'm always working on something. Every one of these cars pretty much needs something. Uh, this car in particular, I'm in the middle of filming the methanol injection install. So that's what that pump is basically doing right there and that's what this line is. This is the fuel line for the methanol injector that's going to be added into the uh, intercooler pipe. But I decided I want to come out here, I wanted to film a video on what I did to fix the throttle and what I did to fix the turbo. If you look at my map sensor, you'll notice I have some higher pressure clamps and some firm, smaller diameter hoses. You have three hoses that go to this map sensor down here that control your wastegate actuator. A lot of people do not realize that this wastegate actually runs on boost pressure. So if these hoses have a clog or a leak, your wastegate actuator will not work properly. I noticed that these hoses were pretty much clogged with debris. The reason there was a lot of debris in there is because prior to running my catch can system, which ties in all of the breathers basically, so we have a rear breather and two valve cover breathers, all of that oil and debris pretty much gets inside this map sensor because it gets inside the turbo and on the pressure side of the turbo shoots all the debris through these hoses. You get tons of debris through the turbo and through the factory intercooler system, especially if you do not have a catch can system. That debris made it into the sensor. What I wanna do is I'm gonna play the footage of me basically getting this map sensor out of the, basically out of here, and then I replaced all the hoses with uh, about seven millimeter diameter hose. The reason I used seven millimeter hose is the factory hose was about, I think it was something like eight millimeters, nine millimeters, it was in that realm, slightly larger. I went to a smaller diameter hose. That's actually a lawnmower fuel hose. So it might even be six millimeter. It, basically, I looked at what I had and I put something smaller diameter on and then I tightened it down with the clamps because my car's hitting 30 pounds of boost. So I was worried that part of that boost wall was maybe there was a leak when I was hitting that high pressure and the wastegate was giving me a problem. But because of the debris that was in there, what was basically happening is the wastegate wasn't functioning properly because the debris was clogging the wastegate. And then what was happening is there was also a slight leak on top of that debris. I think what was happening is the air pressure had nowhere to go and started moving air out of the line instead. So I upgraded that stuff and then I modified the fuel pedal. So let's pull the pedal out and I'll show you what I did. Actually, I think I have a better way of doing it. I'm gonna film tonight an upgrade to my adjustable pedal. Yeah, I like that better. I have an idea. I am very sorry for pausing this video, but I'm excited to let you guys know something. Not only do I offer a second generation intercooler system, for the 2016 to 2019 Chevy Cruze, I started offering generation one cruise parts. So now you can get intercooler systems for the 2008 up to 2016 Cruze. I started adding updates to the website. Not only can you get these intercoolers, I started adding a lot of options. You can get things like satin black, gunmetal gray, body color intercooler pipes, custom colored elbows, as well as intercooler pipes that look like carbon fiber. I'm so excited to be able to expand supercruises.com that I wanted to add everything to this video so you guys can see what I've been doing. Okay, so everybody knows that I'm no stranger to messing around with the throttle position sensor on an electronic throttle system uh, or fly-by-wire if you want to be technical. So uh, 
One thing everyone doesn't realize is you see this portion of the pedal, this is the actual throttle position sensor. This is the pedal. Where this is located is exactly where General Motors has it from the factory. What I'm gonna do is open this up and I wanna show you that you could actually adjust this. So I don't know if you can see that on camera, but if you look, all of the screw holes are basically in the center of the sensor. If you move the sensor this way, what you're actually doing is making it so when you're full throttle, this doesn't read full throttle anymore. It's actually gonna read less, which is actually what we want in this situation because when this pedal reads full throttle, it actually is not full throttle. It's 80% and for some reason my car at 80% starts having a heart attack. So now moving this makes it technically 70%, but it'll keep the car in the position that I need it in to where it's gonna build boost and produce power. So this should fix the problem. Now let me just show you what's inside. You can see here where this, basically the pedal has been moving all of its life. Basically, if you advance it this way, it increases your throttle, meaning when it's this way, the car is gonna think that you're actually pushing the pedal, and if you push it this way, uh, it's gonna change the percentage that it thinks the pedal is at an idle. So what I'm gonna do is move it. I'm gonna basically trick the system into thinking it's at a lower percentage. So when I go full throttle, it's never gonna see over 80%. And actually, let's put it in the car real quick and test that. Now you can see the position sensor is in a different spot. So let's go test it on the car. Okay, I put the pedal back in the car. I just want to show you guys basically how the car idles and the throttle response just to show you that it actually doesn't cause any damage. You're just adjusting your throttle pedal. One might think that turning back the adjustment on the throttle would cause some sort of lag. Let me show you what it does. Okay, so we have no check engine light, no throttle response issues, at least from what I can tell. Uh, let me pull the throttle back out and I'll show you the, uh, the, cheap, the cheap trick. Okay, we're back at the air conditioning cart. Now, I am going to permanently keep the throttle position sensor where I have it now, but I'm gonna show you guys Basically, this was the free mod. I just wanna lock this in place. Okay. Here's the, it costs money and I don't really know where to get this from. Uh, it's left over from some sort of performance kit that I had. I may have enough of this that I can cut you guys a piece if you need it, maybe. Uh, so what I did originally was, watch. By the way, I have like four of these, but this is a fresh one. I really took this foam, I don't know what it is or, or where it came from, and I put it under here. And what that did was actually limit the pedal also. It's literally that simple. Uh, and if I wanted more, I could just double up on it, but that's all I did. Okay, good morning, everybody. So I didn't have time to do this today, but I decided, you know what, let me just clear the garage out and get this car out of the garage and show everybody the difference in the car. Uh, what I did this morning was I turned the throttle position sensor back to where it was from the factory and I that foam that I put under the pedal, I doubled up on it. But I wanna show you guys the difference in the car. I tried to find my suction cup so I could put you in front of the boost gauge, but for some reason, for the life of me, I couldn't find it this morning. But I'm on a little bit of a time crunch today. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Uh, you could still see the gauge and you can literally watch it. Yeah, look. The car 
car hit 25 pounds of boost by like 4,500 RPMs, I think. We're definitely not hitting that boost wall, but I want to get up in the third and fourth gear because that's where I saw it the most. Last thing moves now. All right, so we're back in the garage. Uh, basically, when I first took the car out, we had two of these uh, doubled up. That worked great. Later on, on the way back, I ended up taking one off and just using the one, and I tried to get footage of it, but you know what? There's just too many people on the road today. But you get the point. Either stopping the throttle or adjusting the throttle position sensor will change the boost wall problem. Now, my car would hit 30 pounds of boost first gear, second gear, no problem. When I hit third, fourth, and fifth, I would pretty much always hit that boost wall at like 15 PSI. Today, changing the throttle, we were able to get over 25 pounds of pressure. So that'll give you an idea of what I was trying to accomplish today. I wanted to show you just tweaking the throttle pedal will fix the boost problems. The other thing I want to say is if you're the kind of person who jumps through videos, and you're not watching this entire video, if you miss something, it's on you. Uh, I get a lot of people who actually, like even if I make a three minute video, do not watch the entire thing, and there's something in the video that's important, and instead they're just messaging me, asking me how to fix something when it's literally in the video. So, whatever. I can't, I can't control people who are just gonna skip through stuff. If you miss something, you miss something. Modifying cars is dangerous. It's also a lot of fun. And I'm, it's funny, Summit Cruise uh, told me the other day that I'm experimental. I told him, don't do something dumb like me. And he goes, nah, you're not dumb, you're experimental. So I kind of like that. I experiment, it's what I do. So it keeps my brain going. I enjoy doing this stuff, but I don't want you guys breaking things either. You're learning from me. I'm messing with the car. You could see. Every time I do something, the results are either good or bad. In this situation, the results are fantastic. So just be careful if you're playing with your gas pedal. That's all I'm trying to say. So have a nice day, everybody. If you ever need anything, you know how to get in touch with me. I have my Discord linked in the uh, description. I have my Facebook linked in the description. And then if you're a member of the channel, you know you, we have some private ways to get in touch. And then depending on what membership you have, you literally have my phone number and call me. So uh, it's, there's more to it than that. It's for tech support and stuff like that. So... Uh, thanks again, everybody, and have a very nice day.